Hola Vanidos, ¿cómo estamos? Welcome to Mel's Magic. This is episode 16 of season 4. I'm Magic Mel and this is my spirit guide owl. I'm happy to have you here. So I wanted to record um, this episode today because I've actually gone through a bit of a struggle the past four days or so and it had to do with this age-old story of woe is me. A series of events that had happened where I basically exhausted myself and I was I was um, entering a kind of fatigue stage and then basically the little the little child in me was throwing a tantrum and was blaming everyone else around me <laughs> and I basically what I had to do was to take care of myself but because I preferred well because it seemed easier and more accessible to be in victim mode I went that route and as we know, playing the victim doesn't serve us. It disempowers us, it takes us off our path, it brings us out of alignment, and it just doesn't serve us. It doesn't serve us. However, there was a part of me that was conscious of that happening, but as I said, because I was tired and I felt unjustly, unfairly treated by several circumstances which I actually manifested and created um, I nevertheless went down the victim road and what I learned was if I trace it back and, and see and trace it back to the moment where it happened it happened in the moment where I stepped out of the frequency of gratitude I was so focused on the 3D, I was trying to control situations, I was acting out of my ego, I was hanging on too tight to things, and I literally forgot to remember and to surrender to, to life, to the divine, to the unfolding of events. And there's this, there's this aspect of me that wants to still control things, that wants to have everything figured out, that wants to have a plan that wants to know and see the result right away and that's just not how it works the lesson for me was basically came down to one question either you trust the divine 100 percent either you have 100 percent faith or you don't even one percent of doubt screws up <laughs> the frequency so i look back at these past few days with gratitude because I actually learned it was this age old or the good old lesson of contrast no we can only appreciate or realign with what we want when we experience what we don't want hence there is no good and no bad there is just out of alignment or in alignment so another thing that happened while I was in victim mode um, was the surfacing of fears because once we're out of alignment and slightly, even slightly disconnected from our source, fear takes over. So my existential fears of, oh, how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna make it, how I'm gonna earn enough money, basically projecting fear thoughts into the future and causing me anxiety. The good thing is that these days I have the tools and much more awareness to eventually. It's basically a choice, you know, when do I stop this snowball effect of negative thoughts and anxious thoughts? It's up to me when I choose to stop it. And as I said, for a while I just went along with it because the wave of, of um, poor me, woe me, seemed much more fulfilling in the moment because it was stroking, I was stroking my own ego. But at some point I had to say, Melanie, cut the crap. We know where this is leading us. Cut the crap take out your toolbox, spiritual toolbox, and realign, like take a step back, breathe, ground yourself, and realign. And funnily enough, when I read my cards this morning, they reflected my realignment. So I want to show you, I pull cards, cards of the day for myself, and they pretty much, whether I like it or not, reflect the energy I'm in. So this morning, my realignment was reflected in the two of wands of the wild unknown 
uh, Animal Tao. I love that deck. It's very um, graphic and it uses a lot of lines, no linear artwork. So here are the Two of Wands. This card for me signals, look at it. The, the way ahead is, is clear, clear path ahead. So, and the, you see the seven colors of the rainbow, which means the seven chakras, the path you're realigned and the path is clear. And the supporting card asked for clarification from the Rider Waite Tarot was the Eight of Swords in reverse. So upright, if you look at the Eight of Swords upright, we have this lady who is in, um, what do you call it, in a bondage. <laughs> you know what I mean? She has blind, blindfolded, there you go. And it looks like she thinks she can't get out of it, but actually it's only her worries represented by the swords that keep her stuck. Nothing is actually keeping her stuck, it's herself keeping herself stuck, no? which basically happened to me with my negative thoughts. I have the power to release it. So, oh, sorry. You also see her foot in still in the water and the water stream here symbolizes the current of life, the current of our subconscious, of our intuition. So. She has one foot in and one foot out. It's really up to her to just drop the swords, drop the negative thoughts and free herself. We always have the choice to liberate ourselves. So in the reverse, it was literally that. I came out of this quote unquote stuckness, mental stuckness and the path has been cleared. And just out of curiosity, I asked the Light Series deck, I used the Light Series deck to because I love the illustrations, the images, they're so evocative, even without reading the, um, the actual card, I see enough symbolism there to, to be able to see a story unfold. No? So I use the Light Series deck for my six cards, which you may know from my previous episodes. I, I, pick, I um, pick six cards and st string together a little short story. So I asked the Light Series deck in the light of this new realigned energy today, what is the story of today? And I'll share it with you, Eva. The first card was the Wheel of Fortune, which you see these discs, spinning discs. They look like mandalas, no, or compasses, and there's the word tarot written around it. And here is our main character, liberated and kind of propelled forward, almost in a sense of there's this French saying, reculer pour mieux sauter. It's like to recoil. To be able to better jump and that's what it looks like she looks like she's been propelled from a recoil propelled by the wheel of fortune onwards and upwards with her light and shadow aspects in full control full harness power and she rolled the dice of fortune of her destiny and said you know here i come take me <laughs> so that's the first card luck is on our side the wheel has turned in our favor second card is Queen of Swords, and the Queen of Swords is a very wise, composed, dignified energy who is very much in control of her emotions. You see here actually the cup, her cup of love, present but guarded. And she stands on top of it with her sword, chin up, looking into the horizon like, no BS with me, cut the crap, <laughs> it's not going to work with me kind of attitude. So the Wheel of Fortune has um, propelled the Queen of Swords to her highest energy and she's waiting for the next challenge because she, and I use the word she, but you know, this is not gender specific. So wherever, you know, I'm talking about you, me, we both carry masculine and feminine energies in us anyway, it just happens that our gender, let's say mine is feminine. Um, uh, Yes, feminine in this lifetime, but we carry both energy in us. So I'm talking, I've been talking to a masculine or a feminine out there. So don't get too stuck uh, with the literalness of my words. They're just pointers. So after the Wheel of Fortune has propelled us into the Queen of, uh, Queen of Swords energy and we have gained control of our emotions, we are arriving at a new shore. Six of Swords is arriving at a new shore um, surrender after having surrendered to the higher power, the divine source, and and um, 
let, having, after having left behind the burdens, the pain, the suffering, and go, having, having gone on this new voyage, we are ready to arrive on new and safe shores. We have also learned that the Two of Cups talks about choice and love and union. And to me, this card symbolizes an energy of divine inner union. So as I said, we carry both aspects, animus and anima within us, um, the feminine and masculine. And it's actually when we have harnessed and balanced and unified these two energy within us that we stand in full power. So on this journey, we have also learned that we no longer outsource or disempower ourselves by attaching ourselves to an outer or yearning for an outer union. We know that we need to come into our own power first by unifying these two energy energies within us, by filling our own two cups of masculine and feminine. Only then will we be able to give from our full cup to another. Only then will we be able to manifest and will the universe be able to reflect an outer counterpart who is also standing in his or her unified power. It's only when we have first stepped into our own power that the universe can reflect back at us um, a divine counterpart in the 3D. So we have learned a lot of lessons. The six card shows the seven of wands and we know that this one talks about having come into our power, what I was just talking about, no? So you see our character here on a cushion in a crystal ball. She is completely centered, aligned, her solar plexus radiating out with energy and power. And she is protected. She is divinely protected by her own energy field, her own aura. And she no longer gives in to outer distractions to her purpose. She knows that um, divine union, inner union, also requires us following our soul purpose. That by following our soul purpose, we will actually attract abundance, love, everything the 3D has to offer. It is only a consequence of us standing in our full power and harnessing our inner alignment. So nothing can brace us anymore. No temptations. We're not lowering our frequency for anyone nor anything. People and situations have to meet us at this higher frequency that we have worked very hard to embody. So this is the sixth card. This is our little story so far. The six cards that came out this morning. And I wanted to keep this episode to pull, sorry, the fifth card. And we, you know that I always pull six cards for my short stories. So I wanted to keep this moment and pull the sixth card in front of you as a kind of final <laughs> grand climax so we can conclude the story of today which already took off with beautiful beautiful energies let me put them in in order it's all mirror versed here so i'm getting slightly conf slightly confused always uh one second patience guys i'm practicing patience also temperance and patience so this is the moment there you go. So remember, Wheel of Fortune, Queen of Swords, Six of Swords, Two of Cups, Seven of Wands. So what is the final card for our story today? And the story today, well, it's the story of today, reflecting the energy of today. Tomorrow will be another one. Vale? Let's pull the sixth card. I'm sure you can feel the change in my energy also compared to last episode. But you know what, guys? I'm so proud of myself that I pasted that video together of episode 15 and posted it because I really want to show that I also struggle. You know, Magic Mel is a human being. I have my own struggles. And I want to be... My main purpose is not to be perfect here, but to be authentic. I'm trying to give you... Reflect to you my best energy but also and most importantly my most authentic energy so it was really important for me to have posted last episode bueno allá vamos the sixth card here um angels spirit guides ancestors please give us the sixth card for the ending of our story today thank you
you so much. Super excited. Ah, that was fast. Ready? Okay, I'm going to look at it together with you. And I'm only going to look at it in the upright. Male? So let me hold up the other cards. And let's look at our final card. So having harnessed our energy, having come back into alignment, having transmuted our fears and our doubts, having surrendered our fears to the divine, who is our only pillar of strength, if you really think about it, Every, anything and everything in the 3D, it, it just doesn't satisfy us to that extent. Everything comes from source. Our true alignment, our true power comes from our alignment with our source, with the universe. We are the universe. So when I say up here, it's in here. No? So what is the consequence of us harnessing our power again? The Emperor! Guys, this is massive! So, the Emperor in our story is our divine counterpart. And didn't I just say that? By us going through this transition, having gone, having worked so hard at coming back into alignment, we are actually manifesting our 3D counterpart. Whether that's female or male in the 3D, it doesn't matter. It's the energy of the emperor who is somebody who is also has has also come into uni into unison with his own inner feminine and masculine energies, who is also at the service of the divine. Remember that following our, our soul purpose equals being of service to others because our sole purpose is rooted in love and love is an energy of giving, of endless abundance. We generate, um, when we are in touch with our sole purpose, we're in touch with love and that energy has to radiate outwards. It's an energy, a giving energy, an endless stream of love. And this endless stream brings, reflects back to us in the 3D, our emperor, our divine counterpart, who is on the same path and has done similar work and by actually detaching from outer feminine energies, temptations, is ready to meet his divine counterpart. So I guess I have to talk about the twin flame journey a bit here. You know, the twin flame journey is essentially two souls being embodied. It's the same soul but split into two bodies and um, it's a highly spiritual connection, so deep that goes beyond anything rational. And the purpose actually of the Twin Flame journey is precisely that, spiritual growth, spiritual awakening, um, us being propelled into our soul purpose, into our alignment. And then by each separately coming, first harnessing their own inner powers, their own divine feminine, divine masculine powers, then attract their outer counterpart, so the twin flames come together again after separation and then step into their power together and are of service to whatever the divine is calling us to do. Vale? So beautiful. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful story? By realigning with our center, our source, our chakras, our alignment, by realigning with faith in the divine, surrendering our fears, we are able to come out of our all the illusions the Eight of Swords represent. Fears, negative thoughts, doubt. We cut through the illusion and realign with our truth, our heart space. And by doing so, the Wheel of Fortune turns. We harness our energies through the Queen of Swords. We arrive at the shore after a period of struggle. We have unified our inner divine feminine and masculine. We are in complete alignment and by being in that state of being we attract our counterpart.
counterpart. Now, isn't that a grand final? I love it. Thank you for being with me. I'm going to leave it at that because I'm heading to the beach, guys. <laughs> it's super hot here. Vale? Entonces, I just wanted to tell and share this story with you because I feel there's a beautiful lesson. There's a beautiful lesson in realigning and surrendering our worries, our fears, our doubts to the divine and coming back into alignment, coming back to the frequency of gratitude. Because when we are when we are consumed by fears, we're also not present. We're not present to all the abundance that's around us, to all the blessings that are right here, right now. So let's remember also that gratitude is an anchor to the present. And the frequency of gratitude brings us peace, abundance, prosperity, and everything that 3D has to offer. Because in the frequency of gratitude, we are the source, the generator of our own abundance. Les dejo con eso, ¿vale? Les quiero mucho. Love you all. Thank you for being here with me. Remember, Owl and I have your back. And if you like this video, remember to press the like button. It does help me a lot. It helps my channel to grow. Subscribe to my channel, uh, Mel's Magic. Remember, I'm Magic Mel. My channel is called Mel's Magic. Check out episodes, sorry, season one, two, three, and four. The other episodes of season four. I've got a total of 81 videos floating in the YouTube, in the internet ether. So check them all out. There might be something that resonates with you. And um, share with family and friends and comment if you want. Hello, vale? See you soon for episode 17. Ciao.